The next on our series of special function timer instructions is the wiping relay or pulse output. This has one input trigger and one output and some parameters we can set. We notice from the timing diagram symbol that when the trigger goes high the output will turn on and turn off with the preset time delay regardless of how long the trigger remains on. There's some details on that we'll cover as we go along. So we will set some parameters on this. We'll document as always. So we're going to call this time limit. And we will set it for a three second delay. We'll switch the simulator on. We'll switch on the input. Output turns on immediately. And at three seconds, the output turns off again. We'll watch what happens if we turn off before the time has elapsed. So at one and a half seconds there, we've switched off the input and the output has turned off immediately. This timer has many useful applications, for example, to limit the on time of a heating system. If the user switches on and forgets to switch off, we could set the time delay to a number of hours and minutes and the output will turn off regardless of the status of the input switch. For the next demonstration, we're going to drop the time down to zero seconds and we're going to make the shortest pulse we can, which is 10 milliseconds or one hundredth of a second. Now, in this case, we're going to modify the simulation parameters and we're going to make the input one a momentary push button and we're in simulation mode so we press we can see the input turn on there and we can see the timer running and sometimes you might just catch q1 blinking but it really depends on the where you hit it in relation to the update of the simulator so to aid in debugging this we'll just add in an up down counter on there we'll connect the count input to the output there and run the simulation again. We'll turn on the display of the parameters, run the counter again, and now we can see, even though we occasionally see the cube blink there, the counter is catching every pulse of the input. Our next timer function block is the edge triggered wiping relay. As the name and symbol suggest, the trigger input operates on the rising edge and the reset is just a regular reset input. There are three parameters, the timer actual, the high time and the low time of the strobing cycle. Clean up our diagram. We'll set the parameters for the, the block document as always we'll call it flasher we're going to look for two seconds on one second off and we'll look for three flashes we switch on the input giving a rising edge on the trigger the flasher sequence starts off on off on off and stops Press the reset. Notice that the sequence does not start again because it's rising edge only. We would have to turn off and on again. First release the reset, switch off and restart. Okay, switching off the input and the sequence continues. Three flashes and we're done. To assist in our debugging, we will add in an up-down counter. We're just going to count up, so we don't care about the direction. We're going to reset from the same button over here. Again, tidy up the connections. And display the parameters of the counter. Switch on the simulation mode. And this time we will change the reset 
simulation parameter, we're just going to make it a momentary push button. Notice the symbol down here changes from toggle to push button and we'll run the simulation again. So once initiated, the sequence starts, watch the counter has counted up to three and stop. We can reset. This time we'll look at what happens if we get a second edge before the sequence has started. So we'll initiate again, watch the counter, one, two, turn off and turn on again. And we get three, four, five. So the second edge trigger just reinitiates the sequence in much the same way as resetting the sequence and re-triggering would. The next in our series of timer special functions is the asynchronous pulse counter. This is fairly straightforward. We've got the enable input and an output and we can set the parameters, document as always, we'll call this blinker. We're going to do two seconds on and half a second off, so 50 hundredths in there. We'll run the simulation. We turn on input one and we can see the timer is running and alternating between two seconds count and half a second count. The output status is a bit easier to see on the Q1 indicator on the simulator status bar. We can use the inverse input to swap the time high and time low. So we run the timer normally, observe the lamp, two seconds on, half a second off. By turning the inverse input high, we get half second on and two seconds off. Normally in industrial applications, you want repeatable, predictable behavior. So the addition of the random generator is a little unusual and possibly surprising. timer will document as normal and we'll give it a max on delay of two seconds and a max off delay of two seconds and see what happens. Run the simulator. We're going to put a momentary action button here so I'll change the simulation parameters to momentary push button make and press and hold the button. We can see we got 0.73 second delay. Release the button and looks like we got about half a second. Go again, and we got a 0.84 second release, and it looks like under a second again. 0.17, just over a second. 0.98, and about 1.4 seconds there. So possible uses would be maybe adding some variety to decorations on a cake, tiling, Maybe a game where you want something to steer to a particular angle or something to float to a particular height, and you could control that with a random delay timer. Mm -hmm.